Systematic risk versus unsystematic risk. What does it mean? Ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode, we're going to talk about systematic risk versus unsystematic risk, why it's important. Now, the thing about it, we all know with any, with any investment, you're always going to have to deal with risk. And when you deal with risk, ladies and gentlemen, you know that when you invest, well, you know you're going to have to have some type of risk, but not all risks are the same. Some risks can be diversified away from versus some risks cannot be diversified away from. So in this episode, we're going to talk about unsystematic risk and systematic risk. First, we're going to start off with systematic risk. We're going to talk about what it is, um, ways to diversify away from it. Well, not systematic, but unsystematic, we will. But we're going to start off with un uh, systematic risk. Then we're going to get into unsystematic risk. We're going to give you examples of each. And then we're going to talk about, in the unsystematic way, how you can diversify away from it. Why is this invest uh, important to investments? Because sometimes with investments, I used to always think, oh, you know, you got to risk something in order to make something. But sometimes there's something called dumb risk and risk you don't have to take and risk that you can mitigate, right? So uh, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and jump straight into it. So systematic risk. When you look at your systematic risk, these are risks that cannot be uh, diversified away from. This is kind of like sort of, sort of thing of just the price of doing business. So for prime example, you use the acronym called PRIME, which is P-R-I-M-E. PRIME, right? P-R-I-M-E. So the first one is purchasing power, inflation. Purchasing power is considered inflation, right? When you look at purchasing power, Purchasing power is the, the ability to be able to buy something in the future. For prime example, you have $100 today. Think about how many, you know, if you go to Walmart and you, you brought groceries for 100 bucks, look how, many, how much stuff you could have got into a shopping cart. Versus if you take that same $100 and you went back to 1995 or 1980 with that same $100, you probably will be able to purchase more things. So over time, the same amount of money is purchasing less and less. This is considered purchasing power risk, something that you can't diversify away from. Inflation risk is another one that people love to say is something that you cannot um, diversify away from. It's just part of doing business. It's a systematic risk. The next one, the R, is reinvestment risk. So for prime example, I own Coca-Cola stock. Coca-Cola stock pays a dividend. I don't know when Coca-Cola stock is going to pay a dividend. Dividends are not guaranteed, but it can reinvest at a great time or a bad time. You don't know. So when you reinvest your money or you have your dividends reinvested, you don't know when they're going to be reinvested. That's just a part. It's a risk that you just take in doing business. The next one is called interest rate risk, the I. The P was purchasing power. The R was reinvestment. The I is interest rate risk. We don't know what interest rates are going to be. It's always quoted with Warren Buffett saying that if he had any uh, inkling of what interest rates, if he had any information that he can know in the future, it would be interest rates. That's the most powerful thing. We don't know what interest rates are going to be. Are interest rates going to rise or interest rates going to fall? Right now, interest rates are at a very, very low. Who controls the interest rates? Who controls the interest rates is the Fed chair. This is the Fed chair is uh, Jerome Powell the I, which is interest rate. The interest rate risk is the risk of the interest rates will change in the future. Interest rates going up, and uh, when, you when you're a bondholder and you have interest rates going up, what happens, right? As interest rates in uh, increase and you're a bondholder, that's not good, right? Versus when interest rates are dropping, bond rates, right? So you have, for prime example, look at the people who own a house. For right now, you're seeing a lot of people refinance and people have the ability to refinance because interest rates continue to drop. And every time the economy starts to take a decline, part of the stimulus package is to lower interest rates. So we don't know what interest rates are going to be in the future. Are they going to be higher? Are they going to be lower? Because if I knew interest rates are going to be lower in the future, I may be interested in taking an adjusted interest rate loan. Versus since I don't know what interest rates are going to be, I pick a fixed interest rate. So interest rates control the price that we get on cars, the price we get on credit cards, all sorts of things, right? The next one is market risk. When you invest in, you have to deal with market risk. We don't know what the market is going to do. You know, uh, you see the market take 
who who would have guessed last year in 2020 that would have seen a big pandemic hit and the market take a decline? We didn't know this information, right? So since we didn't know this information, this makes it extremely, um, it's a risk that we can't diversify, diversify away from. The next one is exchange rate risk. Exchange rate risk, we don't know what currencies are gonna be exchanging for. Prince, why do I care about exchange rate risk? Most of your top companies in America are doing business overseas. So for prime example, if you make, uh, let's say if you're selling a product in, pay, in pesos in Mexico, you, you earn, let's say Nike earns a lot of money, let's say $1,000 in pesos, not $1,000 in pesos, let's say if they earn 1,000 pesos, 1,000 pesos, what does that convert to in dollars? The exchange rate risk is always changing, we don't know. As the dollar gets stronger, other currency tendency have a tendency to get weaker. And as the other currency get weaker, the dollar has a tendency to get strong. So you don't know if the dollar is going to be stronger in the future or weaker in the future. That's an exchange rate risk. Prime, P-R-I-M-E, purchase power, reinvestment, interest rates, market, and exchange. You can't diversify away from that. Now, we want to get into unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk is a risk that um, that you can diversify away from, that you can limit. Now, I don't have a pretty acronym for unsystematic, but we're going to go some through some of the unsystematic risks. Now, political risk. When you look at political risk, the political risk is you look at a country like Venezuela, or you look at Detroit, Michigan, or you look at Orange County, California. Detroit, Michigan defaulted on its debt. Venezuela, we don't know what's going on over there. Their inflation rate is through the roof. And you look at Orange County. Orange County is a company, not a company, but uh, not a company. But let me let me take that back. That's what that's due to that's a different type of risk. Let's stay with international. When you invest internationally, you have a political risk. And what I mean by that, let's take a country like Venezuela or let's take a country like China, right? We all know last year the topic of discussion before the pandemic hit was everybody was all concerned about trade, trade wars, tariffs, tariffs getting raised. President Trump wakes up, he says, hey, I'm gonna put a tariff on Chinese oil, I'm just hypothetically speaking, but he will raise uh, tariffs at any time. So that means that any time the country is, any time a country, whatever they are importing into our, uh, into our country, their price just increased. When you're looking at that, that is very, very, that's a risk that you take when you invest overseas, political risk. Let's say over in China or a country like Iran or something like that, what a government could be overthrown. Just could just wake up one day and say, hey, we want our president out of office. We don't want you to be our president anymore. They can't overthrow the government. That's considered a political risk, ladies and gentlemen. So when you invest overseas, you invest in international, that's a political risk. But the good news is that this is uh, unsystematic, right? Unsystematic meaning that you can diversify away from this sort of risk. How can you invest, how can you diversify away from this sort of risk? This type of risk is not investing overseas or diversifying your portfolio, not only having all your money with one company, but putting your money into other companies, right? So with that being said, hey, don't put all your money into China. You can put some of your money in America and China or spread it between Asian companies, European companies, things like that. You can diversify away from political risk by investing into different countries, right? The most solid, crazy as it may seem to some people, the most solid political country is America, right? So now the next one you have is business risk, business risk, the risk of just doing business. What's an example of this? Just think about it. Who would have thought in 2019, as we were celebrating New Year's, that we would see companies like California Pizza that would disappear? Who would have took the bet last year that Zoom would be worth more money than all the airlines combined, market cap wise speaking, right? We've seen Zoom become a premier company over airlines. Airlines, as everybody knows, the travel industry has been taking tanking very hard, take a massive hit. But who would have took that bet last year? Who would have took the bet that restaurants would be having a hard time this year? Many people would never saw that coming. Who would have bet that would have had an airborne pandemic that would pretty much derail our, our economy here in America? Many people wouldn't have took that risk. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the risk of just doing business. You, don't, you do not know 
Who would have known that restaurants, who would have known that uh, you, were talking, you were talking about 20 years ago, who would have known that phones would just take over the world? That people would be watching movies uh, via phones. So by the business risk, people back then, people said, hey, guess what, Prince? We're always gonna drive vehicles. We're always gonna need oil. Newsflash. Now we're moving more and more to electronic vehicles. 20, 30 years ago, people said, Prince, we're always gonna watch movies. Blockbusters would be a great investment. Movie theaters would be a great investment. It was 20, 30 years ago. Who would have thought that people would be sitting at home on the comfort of their home, watching movies online via the internet or via their phone? We're still watching movies, but the way we watch movies are totally different. Look at companies like Uber and Lyft that just came out and made a big name for themselves, ladies and gentlemen. This itself is business risk, the risk of doing business. You just don't know what's gonna happen when you're doing business. The next risk, but you can diversify away from business risk by putting your money into different sectors. For prime example, you may have money into the technology sector. You may have money into real estate. You may have money into uh, real estate. You may have some into energy. You may have money, energy, real estate, uh, groceries, and things like that. So think about it. We're always going to consume groceries. We're always going to eat food. But who would have thought we'd have been buying our food via our food? So this itself, this is how you can diversify from business risk by diversifying via sectors. As you see, companies like Zoom has had a great year. Companies like airlines have been struggling. Travel industry has struggled. But if you are diversified, you can diversify away from business risk. So first we talked about political risk and how to diversify away from it. Then we just discussed business risk and how to diversify away from it. The next one is called financial risk. Financial risk, most people do not know what financial risk is because it's under my opinion and belief about 90 to 99, 95 to 95, 95 to 98% of investors do not know how to read financial reports or read financial reports. I won't say don't know how to read. Most finance people who buy stocks, they consider research is by talking to a couple of friends and family, looking up a couple of articles online and they say, hey, I know this company, I've done research. How many people have looked at the 10K report, the 10Q report, looked at the liabilities of the company, knows the total debt of the company, knows the debt to equity ratio, the asset to liability, know what the network of the company is, shareholders equity, most people do not know that. So financial risk is taking on a lot of debt and being able to pay it back and grow your business. Some companies are experiencing a lot of growth from borrowing a lot of money, much money. So that requires you to know the debt equity ratio. In order to know the debt equity ratio, you probably, unless you got some type of software, that requires you open up a 10K report, a 10Q report, something that most financial, uh, most people that invest don't do. Professionals know this or should know this, that you should be able to look at uh, financial risk. So a company, me borrowing a lot of money to start a company. Um, yes, my company is growing, I'm doing a lot of great things, but my ability to be able to pay that money back is a financial risk when you're dealing away with that. That risk can be diversified away from by knowing companies, knowing doing your research and knowing companies that have a large, knowing their cash to uh, equity ratio, knowing their debt to equity ratio, knowing is um, the ability, being able to evaluate the company's ability to pay, uh, away, pay away of its debt. So for prime example, if I know a company has a million dollars in cash, but also I know the debt is only $100,000. I can say, hey, this company, it has enough current assets to be able to pay off its long-term debt at any time. That's my ability to be able to get away from financial risk or diversify away from financial risk. The next one, these kind of go hand in hand, default and credit risk. So when you purchase a bond, you are essentially purchasing debt from a corporation. It's an IOU from a corporation. So you have corporate bonds, you have government bonds, you have you know cities issue bonds, big municipal bonds, but it's pretty much my corporation is saying that, hey, let me borrow a thousand dollars and I'm gonna pay you back with interest in the future. That's all a corporate bond is. So when you look at a corporate bond, um, when you look at a corporate bond, uh, that's pretty much what it is. So a corporate bond is fine. They're saying, hey, let me borrow a thousand dollars and I'll pay you back in five years and I'm gonna give you 4% over five years. Sounds like a pretty good deal. I invest $1,000, I'm gonna make, that's about what, $40, $40 or whatnot over the next five years. Oh, 
pretty cool deal. The deal is great until, unless that company defaults, meaning the company goes bankrupt. Going back to the companies, are, uh, the ent entities that I mentioned earlier, looking at Detroit. Detroit defaulted on $600 million worth of bonds back in 2013, if I'm not mistaken. So that itself, a bond, that's the default risk. Somebody, you let somebody borrow money and they lose their job. They don't have any income. They default on their loans. Default or a credit risk. The credit risk is that the person you lend money to can't pay you back. The bank lent me money to purchase my car. I'm making the car notes. I'll find it, Danny, until I can't pay back the bank. That's when it becomes an issue. That's a default and a credit risk. How can that be diversified away from? That can be diversified away from reading the, knowing the all bonds, just like I have a credit score, individuals have a credit score. So does, uh, so does corporations. You have bonds that have, looking up the, if it's a grade A bond, bond, triple A bond, triple B bond, there are different grades for bonds. So the greater ability that the company can pay back its debt, the greater, uh, the less interest it's gonna pay and the greater score the bond is gonna be. But by doing due diligence, you can diversify away from that by investing into different types of bonds. Not buying just only corporate bonds, but you could buy corporate bonds, followed by government bonds, followed by long-term bonds, short-term bonds. You can buy different terms of bonds so if a city, if you if you have a bunch of muni bonds, municipal bonds, let's say if a city defaults on its debt, that all your money is not tied up into one city, you can diversify between grades and also different types of bonds. That's how credit and default risk can be diversified away from. The next one is event risk. Event risk, who remembers the BP oil spill? Remember, we just woke up one day, BP oil just spilled a bunch of oil in the middle of the ocean. And nobody knew what happened. And, you know, BP oil started to crash and everybody questioned all the fracking and oil prices started to rise. That's an event. You, you just can't help. Just like the pandemic just came out of the blue and hit the market. And it, something like that would happen again and again. But it's a black swan event. So how can you stop this from happening? How can you prevent this from happening? You can't prevent it from happening. Um, what, what you're going to be able to do, you can diversify away. For prime example, if you had a company like BP that uh, experienced a very hard time, uh, what I mean by experienced a very hard time, that had an oil event, had a big event that happened, if you're diversified into other entities or different companies, your money's not tied into one place. So you can diversify from an event. A event, we don't know when it's going to happen. It's a risk. Who knows? Reputation. Tomorrow they could come out and say, hey, Coca-Cola has been stealing money and take a big reputational blow hit that can drop the stock. You don't know what can happen. But to stop that from happening, you can diversify across the board. All right. Now, that's the, uh, that's the risk. We just spoke about systematic risk before earlier. The systematic risk is risk that you just, it's just the risk of investing. You really can't diversify away from that. We use the acronym PRIME, P-R-I-M-E. P being purchasing power, R being reinvestment risk, I being interest rate risk, and M being market risk, and E being exchange rate risk. We just can't really diversify away from them. That's just a part of doing business. Now we talked about unsystematic risk. Unsystematic risk is risk that you can diversify away from. We talked about political risk. You can diversify away from political risk by uh, spreading your money across different countries. So for prime example, some companies, countries can be overthrown. So you don't put all your money into one particular uh, one particular country. Now, another way I like to diversify away from political risk is you diversify away from political risk due to their ability to, uh, what you call it, due to your ability to, um, you can, Finding something that both Republicans and Democrats agree upon that's domesticated. So a country, a company, for prime example, that's here in California that both Republicans and Democrats agree upon, for prime example, I can limit my political risk on airline stocks because both Republicans and Democrats believe that airlines should get a second round bailout. So since both of them agree upon it, 
that limits my risk of one just jumping up out of the blue and saying no or whatever the case may be. That's just an example I'm using hypothetically. Another one, business risk. You have the risk of just doing business. Who would have known that restaurants would have, uh, who would have known that drive-throughs would become more popular and steakhouses would have a big issue in 2020? Who would have took that bet in 2019? Not that many people, but things happen. Who would have took the bet that Zoom would be worth more than all the major airlines combined? That's just a part of doing business. Now you look at the risk of financial risk, the, the risk you have a financial risk, the risk that the country company would be able to pay back this money. These are all unsystematic things. We talked about default and credit. We talked about um, event risk and one risk I forgot, liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is a risk, uh, unsystematic risk. Liquidity is a risk of you being able to convert your, your investment into cash in a short amount of time. For prime example, I have an emergency my water heater just went out. I need to. I need this cash right now so I can pay somebody to come out here, replace my water heater. Now, if my money is tied up into a, let's say Coca-Cola stock, I have to sell the stock. Then I have to wait till the money clears. Then I have to transfer, wait till it gets in my account. That's liquidity. Or if I, I took my cash and I put it inside of a home, I brought a house or I brought a, real, a rental property or I brought a piece of land, how long would it take to, for the land that I own? How long would it take for that land to convert to cash? That's liquidity risk. So how fast can your money convert to cash that can be used to pay debt or to buy inventory to become an accounts receivable to become a profit? So that's liquidity risk. And the event risk we talked about, we don't know what can happen at any time. Uh, well, let's talk about ways to diversify from liquidity risk is, hey, have some of your money in a savings account, have some money in a money market account, Maybe have some in the bonds, some in the stock or whatnot. So don't have all your money tied up into long-term investments. That's a liquidity risk. Event risk is the event that anything can happen at any time, like BP oil can just, a major oil spill can just happen at any time. You diversify away from that by buying different sectors. Well, well ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude today's topic. I hope you guys and girls took something away from it. It was a very top, a very, uh, I would say, complex episode for me today had a couple technical difficulties but i'm glad i was able to get in here and get this uh taken care of for you guys and girls guys and girls uh across the globe uh we talked about systematic risk unsystematic risk uh risk you can't diversify away from versus risk that you can diversify away from i hope you took something away from it and to the next video podcast cartoon book or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe peace be safe i'm out and thank you Thank <laughs> you.